Hello students, welcome to my educational employment opportunity channel. Uh, this is uh, your organizer. sir. So in our series, today we are going to complete the next chapter, that is chapter number 5 in Geography, CBSC. That is uh, Natural Vegetation and Wildlife. So let us uh, start that topic. Before going to the topic, as you know, this uh, series was uh, cover, I mean, targeting for NTIC level 1 and level 2 and CBSE board examinations as well as uh, other competitive exams. So in this video, we are going to discuss the chapter is uh, Natural Vegetation and uh, Wildlife, the complete lesson we are going to discuss today. Right? So friends, still you are not subscribed to my channel, do subscribe now and press the bell icon, you will get a notification as soon as uh, I will upload my videos. So friends, uh, let us uh, we'll enter the topic is, that is the chapter number 5, Natural Vegetation and Wildlife. So friends, as you know, our India is one of the richest country in the world in a biodiversity. So we have a use of plant species as well as a animal species in the country. So the entire the plant species we can say simply as a natural vegetation or we can call it as a flora. Let us discuss about this flora all the things but what is meant by this uh, natural vegetation. Natural vegetation means uh, it is a the growth of the plant or it is a plant, it is a, it's a layer of the plants grown outside without human aid, without help of human people, human beings. Those are uh, vegetation, those plant species we call as, uh, those plants we call as uh, natural vegetation. It means, uh, I want to give you a clarity to you that the orchards, crops, and uh, these or the gardens, these all are not comes under natural vegetation. Those are the part of vegetation, undoubtedly. But those are not comes under natural vegetation. So natural vegetation means uh, the area the plants can grow without human aid, without human interferences. Those we call as a uh, natural vegetation. So basically, in India, it's one of the richest country in the flora and fauna as we discussed. So due to that, uh, India is the one of the country in a 12th mega biodiversity. So what is this mega biodiversity? Who was developed this mega biodiversity concept? The concept of mega biodiversity was developed by World Bank. It's a World Bank concept. So according to this concept, India has a one of the mega biodiversity country among all 12 mega biodiversity countries in the world. So with this, India has a rich in uh, different, uh, you know, different kinds of things. Those are like uh, 47,000 of uh, plant species we have. With this number, we have 10th position in the world, 4th uh, fourth position, fourth position in uh, Asia. And also we have uh, 15,000 of uh, flowering plants. With this is uh, accounts of uh, 6% of the total world uh, flowering plants. And uh, not only the plants and but also the animals comes to the animal life. Around 89,000 of uh, animal species uh, can be found in India. In this, 12,000 of bird species, which accounts 13 percent of the entire the world species, as well as uh, 2,500 of types of uh, fish species, which consist 12 percent of uh, entire the total world fish stock. And not only this, but also it have uh, 5 to 6 percent of uh, amphibians reptiles and mammals. With this, India we can known as a, a 12th a mega biodiversity country, one of the 12 mega biodiversity country because of this all the richness. Let us discuss uh, about what is a natural vegetation, what is a virgin vegetation. So the natural vegetation is also called as a virgin vegetation basically but the small difference is there. That is a, a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid uh, is known as a uh, natural vegetation. It is a plant community, a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid uh, is known as uh, uh, natural vegetation. Whereas the virgin vegetation is nothing but that natural, veg natural vegetation. What natural vegetation? A plant community which has grown naturally without uh, human aid uh, and uh, has been left undisturbed, undisturbed by human for a long time called as a uh, virgin 
vegetation. So this is called as a virgin vegetation. Is clear? Next, the total vegetation or natural vegetation and wildlife, the both the together, we can classify into two categories. That is called as a flora and a fauna. Flora is nothing but the total plant species in a particular area known as flora. And fauna is nothing but the total animal species under a particular region, geographical region is called as fauna. And uh, the flora consists uh, like uh, grass, trees, forest, scrubs, grass lawns, all are, all are the, uh, you know, comes under uh, flora. And fauna, it's nothing but uh, all animals like uh, birds, mammals, reptiles, fishes, amphibians, human beings, these all are comes under fauna, right? So, as you know, around 47,000 of uh, flora species can be noticed uh, and uh, approximately 89,000 of uh, fauna, uh, fauna species can be noticed in our country. So, this is about flora and uh, fauna. Now, what are the factors are responsible for what are the factors are responsible or affecting uh, on flora and uh, fauna? Let us discuss those. The factors that affect on uh, flora and fauna. So those are especially, there are two important factors are there. The first one is relief features. The relief factors, second one is uh, the climate. First one is what? Relief features. Second one is climate. In the relief features, we'll discuss about land and soil, the influence of land and soil. In the climatical conditions, we'll discuss about influence of temperature, so photo, photo period means nothing but sunlight as well as a uh, precipitation. So what, how it affects on it, we will discuss now. So let's we start with the uh, relief features. So in the relief features, the first most important thing is land. We can see different kinds of uh, vegetation in the mountains, in the plain areas, in plateau region, even in desert region. We can notice different kinds of vegetation. In the mountain area, we can notice one kind of vegetation. In the plain area, we can notice another kind of vegetation. As well as the plateau region is a different type. Desert area is quite different. The kind of uh, plants which grow in dry and uh, wet areas also quite different. The plants which grow in a dry as well as wet area, it is also quite different. So this is, uh, we can say, the land uh, uh, directly or indirectly influence uh, the growth of vegetation. Next one is soil. The soil also are the most important factor and it is also uh, supports different kinds of uh, plant species. That's what uh, the soil is different from one place to another place and each soil has a different characters and uh, supports different types of plants. For example, in dry sandy soil, desert area, it can support uh, the plants like a cactus, and thorny bushes. Whereas, uh, whereas there is a high water and uh, soil of delta region, it can be supports uh, mangroves and uh, wetland forests. So, this is what the soil also responsible for the growth of variety of uh, uh, flora. So, and fauna also, right? Next one is, uh, this is the two things are relief features. Next, we're going to discuss about uh, the climatical conditions. How the climate is the difference, uh, I mean, influence this particular thing. In the climate, first one, we can say that temperature. So the temperature determines, uh, you know, the extension of vegetation along with uh, its soil, precipitation and humidity. So the definitely the temperature plays an important role. So the temperature determines uh, the type of vegetation along with uh, soil, precipitation and humidity. In the places above the snow line, in the tundra region, only mosses and lichens are found. In the you know, less temperature area, mostly in tundra region, very cool areas, we can notice uh, the plant species like uh, mosses and lichens. And the areas of high temperature and uh, heavy rainfall areas, we can notice uh, many types of plant species, trees and bushes, scrubs, creepers, and found the different places to, according to the climatical and temperature conditions. Right? So this that's what the temperature also plays an important role. If the high temperature areas, there, where there is this high rainfall, we can notice thickly densely forest areas. High temperature areas, no rainfall, we can notice a desert type of climate for forest. Low temperature and high mountain areas, we can notice a Himalayan type of vegetation. Like it also depends upon a climate, I mean a temperature. Next one is a photo period. 
the photo period is nothing but the sunlight the photo period also we call as sunlight see that the amount of sunlight received by a place depends upon the latitude of the place altitude of the place season duration of the day so the trees grows faster due to the longer sunlight so actually the sunlight or a photo period the photo period also quite a difference it depends upon uh, latitude altitude and the duration of the day latitude altitude and duration of the day in the lower latitudes we can receive a high sunlight and can notice a more and more plants growth in higher altitude areas the receives a less temperature cool climate can be noticed so there is a chances to grow uh, different kinds of uh, plants and uh, duration of the day suppose the day is very long the long duration getting uh, sunlight to the particular region so that region definitely develops you know uh, high density of uh, trees or forests so that's what uh, the sunlight that sunlight also plays important role to grow the plant species so friends uh, and students here one question is for question for you you can answer it is i think that is uh, why are the southern slopes in himalayas why are the southern slopes in himalayas region covered uh, thick with a thick vegetation cover compared to the northern slopes of uh, same hills in himalayas southern slopes are consist of thick uh, vegetation compared to northern slopes why so you just uh, answer this question in the comment section and uh, send to me immediately i'll respond whether you are think is right or wrong i'll give a right answer to you later right that is what about it and last one is the precipitation so the precipitation is nothing but one kind of uh, form of rainfall right so in india most of the rainfall brought by advancing monsoons mostly we can say the no, uh, southwest monsoons as well as uh, retreating monsoons i can say northeast monsoons by the both uh, will get rainfall so the areas of heavy rainfall have a uh, dense vegetation and dry arid regions are having a uh, sparse vegetation which area having a high rainfall in that area we are getting more and denser uh, vegetation can be noticed uh, which area getting less rainfall that area we cannot notice any kind of vegetation or very spare uh, vegetation can be found so here one more question to you that why we have the western slopes of the western ghats why we have the western slopes of the western ghats covered with uh, thick forest and uh, thick forest and not the eastern slopes of the western ghats why the western slopes of the western ghats covered with thick forest why not in eastern slopes of the western ghats so you can answer it uh, uh, in the comment section and send to me next one is uh, so these are the factors are responsible for flora and fauna so based on this based on this uh, we can uh, uh, have a different types of uh, natural vegetation as well as wildlife means flora as well as fauna let us will discuss about uh, the importance of forest the importance of forest as you know according to uh, nss national samples of organization nsso and uh, every country should have 33 percent of the land area under forest so that is maintains ecological balance so then what is the importance of the forest to maintain the forest actually so very important question it is that is uh, because it's very important to us because first thing is the forest are renewable resources the forest are renewable resource second thing is these are plays a major role in a enhancing the quality of environment and it modify the local climate and it's control the soil erosion and it's regulate the stream of the flow regulate the stream of the flow and it supports the variety of uh, industries and the forest provide livelihood for many communities and offer uh, you know recreation or paramanic and scenic view of uh, people and it's also controls the wind force and the temperature causes a rainfall and it provides humus to soil it provides humus to the soil and also it provides to wild uh, shelter to the wild life so because of these advantages uh, we have to maintain a forest if you maintain the forest ultimately the ecosystem will be 
balance. We can maintain ecological balance. So next, what is meant by eco balance or ecosystem? So the ecosystem is nothing but all plants and animals, all plants and animals in an area are dependent or interrelation. They should have a interdependent or interrelation to each other on their physical development on their physical development that system we called as a ecosystem so ecosystem means all plant species all animal species which are living in a particular area they have a interdependent each other for their uh, physical development that is a, that system we called as a ecosystem right so this is about uh, it now we're going to discuss uh, the types of uh, vegetation the types of vegetation let's see the total vegetation can be divided into different categories actually in the country right so that is the first one we can say the tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest second one is a uh, tropical deciduous forest third one is a uh, tropical thorn forest and uh, shrubs tropical thorn forest and uh, scrubs and last one is a uh, mountain forest or mountainous forest mountain forest or mountainous forest and the uh, last one is a uh, mangrove forest mangrove forest or tidal forest so these all the types of forest can be noticed in our country let us be discuss each and everything in very detailed manner right the first one is a uh, tropical evergreen forest the tropical evergreen forest the tropical evergreen forest also we called as a uh, rainforests the tropical evergreen forest also we called as rainforests these forests are restricted in the areas of heavy rainfall areas these are mostly we can notice a uh, heavy rainfall areas such as uh, western ghats lakshadweep andaman nicobar islands assam tamil nadu and uh, you know west bengal region the coast of tamil nadu and uh, west bengal region in this particular area we can notice a uh, tropical evergreen forest so these tropical evergreen forest can grow very thickly and very height so it can grow up to 60 meters of height and uh, they have a broad leaves they have a broad leaves so these broad leaves cannot allow the sunshine to reach the ground as well as uh, they can form a canopy in the uh, one branch to another branch joining and it can form like a, a canopy shape which can layer can stops the prevention of uh, sunlight to the ground so the most important uh, uh, trees that grows in this uh, uh, tropical evergreen forest are ebony mahogany rosewood rubber cinchona are the most important trees very important and ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and uh, cinchona are the most important uh, trees can be noticed in a tropical evergreen forest and the animals are in this particular forest the animals we can find like those are like uh, elephants monkeys camor deer one horned rhinos birds bats sloths and uh, other important animals can be found in the particular forest area this is about a tropical evergreen forest remember in the tropical evergreen forest we need to remember the animals and trees the important thing for this is the most important thing is the trees and the animals okay next one is uh, so this is the tropical evergreen forests so these are actually why it's called is evergreen you know as you know because uh, the throughout the year it will be appears very green it means it doesn't it mean uh, so it does not mean it can't uh, shed the leaves no it can shed the leaves but until the leaves at a time it cannot understood so that's what it's called as uh, our green forests next one is the tropical deciduous forests the tropical deciduous forests these tropical deciduous forests can be noticed in the the rainfall ranges between uh, 70 cm to 200 cm the annual rainfall is between 70 cm to 200 cm uh, in this area it can be grow mostly these trees are found in uh, himalayas jharkhand west bengal odisha chatisgarh bihar in the other areas it can be noticed so these tropical deciduous uh, forests again divide into two categories 
based on the availability of the water. One is called as a uh, dry deciduous, sorry, moist uh, dry deciduous. Second one is a uh, moist deciduous forest. So the moist and the dry deciduous forest, like it can be divided into two categories. So the moist deciduous forests are found in, with the uh, rainfall ranges uh, between 100 centimeters to 200 centimeters. It is mostly found in uh, northeastern states along with the uh, foothills of Himalayas, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, and the eastern slopes of the Western Ghats. In this particular area, we can notice uh, moist deciduous forests. And these uh, important uh, uh, trees are here. Those are uh, teak, bamboo, sal, sesame, kheer, and uh, arjun, mulberry, sandalwood. These are the important trees in this particular uh, moist deciduous forest. The second one is uh, dry deciduous forest. When it comes to the dry deciduous forest, these are found in areas with uh, the rainfall ranges between uh, 75 centimeters to 100 centimeters area. They found in a uh, rainier parts of the peninsular plateau and the uplands of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh region. So these are open stretches are uh, which is I mean these are the most important trees that grows here are those are teak, sal, people, neem and other trees grows in the particular region. So a large part of this vegetation has been uh, cleared for cultivation and some parts of the used for the grazing lands. So this is about uh, uh, these are so this is about dry deciduous forests. So the large part of this vegetation has been cleared for uh, cultivation and some parts of are used for grazing. So in the dry deciduous last part, large part of this vegetation was cleared for uh, uh, you know uh, grasslands and as well as cultivation and also some domestic purpose also. So this is about uh, uh, the tropical deciduous forests. Next one is the uh, yeah, this is the moist deciduous forest and uh, dry deciduous forests. Let us see the tropical thorny forest and uh, scrubs. The tropical thorny forest and scrubs. So these are the found in uh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh and uh, Haryana. In the particular states mostly we can notice. The most important trees are here like uh, Akashia, Palms and uh, Cactus etc. These are the important uh, trees can be found in this particular region and here animals are like uh, rats, mice, rabbit, fox, wolf, tiger, lion, ass, horses, camel, these all are the animals can be noticed in this uh, tropical, sorry, tropical thorn forest or uh, scrubs, clear? So this is about uh, it. Next one is, uh, yeah, this is the pick, uh, pick about uh, tropical uh, thorn forest. Next one is a uh, mangrove forest. The mangrove forest also we known as a uh, tidal forest. So these forests can be noticed uh, delta region and heavy rainfall areas and flood flood areas mostly. So mostly these uh, mangrove forests, the tidal forest can be now found in uh, the delta of Ganga, Kaveri, Krishna, Kodavari, Mahanadi etc. regions. And uh, here the trees are like uh, palm tree, coconut, curio, agar and or, or other important trees can be found in the particular region. Next uh, here the animals like uh, royal Bengal tiger, crocodile, turtles, right, chariots, etc., uh, snakes, etc. can be found in this particular region, right. So these are the most important animals can be noticed in this uh, uh, mangrove trees. Next one is, uh, yeah, this is about totally vegetation. Next one we are going to discuss about uh, the uh, medicinal plants. So medicinal, oh sorry, one more thing is there, there is a mountain forest. So the mountain forest, these are the forests are found exclusively in hilly regions like Himalaya region. And here the trees are pine, deodar, cedar, birch, fir, etc. These are the important trees can be found here. And here the important animals are like uh, Kashmir stag, spotted deer, wild sheep, jock, rabbit, Tibetan antelope, yak, Snow leopard, quarrels, swiggy, shaggy, one horned rhino, wild ibex, and uh, Himalayan black bear. So, these are the important animals uh, can be found in a mountain region. In the mountain region, the most important thing is according to the elevation, according to the latitude, according to the height, uh, the trees can be grow. Okay. 
next one is uh, the medicinal plants see the medicinal plants are actually india is known for its uh, herbs and uh, spices from ancient time some 2000 plants have been described and about uh, in arya aryaveda and at least 500s are in a regular the world conservation union has a red list has uh, named as a uh, 352 medicinal plants of the plants of which 52 are critically threatened and uh, 49 are endangered the commonly used uh, plants in india are mostly sarpagandhi jamun arjun babul neem tulasi and uh, kachna these are the important uh, medicinal plants commonly used in our country so you know sarpagandhi is mostly used for treating blood pressure it's found in uh, only in india and uh, the jamun you know the jamun it is uh, the juice from the ripe of the fruits it's used to prepare the uh, you know uh, which i mean which it's mostly used for uh, some carnivative and uh, directive and also the digestive properties so some digestive problems uh, they can use the jamun arjun is a the fresh juice of uh, leaves is a cure for a uh, earache it's also used to re regulate the blood pressure also and uh, the bubble tree these leaves are used as a cure for eye sores and uh, its gems is used to a tonic and last one la next one is the neem it's a high antibiotic uh, and antibacterial property tulsi plant it is used to cure cough and uh, cold and uh, kachnar it's used to cure asthma and uh, ulcer the birds and uh, roots are good for the digestive problems so this is about these are the things we are using uh, in the country as a medicinal plants some pics of the medicinal plants are uh, look at this this is a sarpagandhi plant it's only available in india this is a arjun plant this is a neem so these all are the used for uh, used as a medicinal plants in our country next we going to discuss about uh, wildlife so as you know india is rich in uh, flora as well as the fauna flora means plant species already we discussed now we going to discuss about fauna that is uh, animal species so in india we have 89000s of animal species in that 12000 bird species which consist 13% is the world uh, bird species and 2500 of fish species which consist 12% uh, of the world entire the stock and also 5 to 6% is of amphibians reptiles and the mammals so this with this uh, uh, this is how this country this much of uh, the great uh, uh, wildlife in our country you know india is the only country have both lion and uh, tiger lion and tiger so in india mostly we can say the royal bengal tiger the royal bengal tiger are found especially in a mangrove forest of west bengal in india the mangrove forest of west bengal in india next one is uh, the lion lion are the uh, lion are also mostly found in tropical deciduous uh, gir forest of uh, gujarat in gujarat gir forest uh, region the aesthetic lines can be preserved here next uh, the one horn rhinos the one horn rhinos are found in tropical rain forests of uh, kaziranga national park of uh, sikkim and assam in sikkim and assam particular regions kaziranga national park area so the one horn rhinos are uh, protected and next one is uh, red panda so they are found in a uh, mountain forests of himalayas himalayan ranges can be noted this is a wide uh, different size of animals and not only this even uh, desert area we can notice camel camel is known as the sheep of the desert so some other animals can be found in our country mostly in the jammu and kashmir mountain forest areas especially ladakh region some animals we can found those are like uh, yak shaggy horned wild ox tibetan antelope and uh, burrel wild sheep kyan and also ibex bears snow leopard and red panda in certain pockets of our country can be noticed these pics you can notice here look at the pics of here this is about a uh, yak and uh, the burrel the kyan and the shaggy horned wild ox right and also tibetan antelope so these are some other examples of uh, the pics which uh, picture which is available the animals in our country next one is uh, some animals also can be noticed in particular area especially elephants see suppose you can see the elephants we can notice in a hot wet forest of assam karnataka and kerala in that area we can notice elephants and uh, uh, rhinos rhinos 
in the swampy and marshy lands of Assam and West Bengal, we can notice the rhinos and lions in the gir forest in Gujarat and tigers in the forest of Madhya Pradesh and uh, Sundarbans of West Bengal and uh, Himalayan region and camels in the desert of Rajasthan and wild ass in the run of Kutch region. The animals can be noticed in the country. Next one is uh, what are the what are the you know problems faced by animals? They go into extinct. So mostly the animal species are facing the problem by these following points. The first one is uh, hunting by greedy hunters for the commercial purpose. The second thing is pollution due to chemical and industrial waste. Pollution due to chemical and industrial waste and acid deposits. The third one is the introduction of uh, uh, different species and the reckless cutting of forest to bring the land under cultivation as well as uh, inhabitation. So because of these all the points uh, the species are going to the species are have a great danger. Next one is uh, so what are the steps taken by the government of India to control these all the things. Mostly you know the India was announced 14 biospheres, bio reserves have been set up in our country to protect uh, flora and fauna. To protect flora and fauna how many bio reserves are set up? 14 bio reserves were set up. So those are uh, Sundarbans, Nanda Devi, Gulf of Manar, Nilgiri. In this among these 14, these four have been uh, included in the world network of mega biodiversities. The world network of mega biodiversities. The financial and technical assistance is provided to the botanical gardens by the government in, since uh, 1992. From 1992, the government of India providing the financial support to the botanical gardens of India to ensure uh, these uh, flora and fauna, maintenance of the flora and fauna. And also, they launched the Project Tiger, the Project Rhino, the Project Great Indian Bustard and uh, the many other eco-development projects have been uh, introduced uh, to conserve this uh, flora and uh, fauna. And also, we have uh, 89 national parks, 49 wildlife sanctuaries and geological gardens are set up to take care of uh, natural heritage. So these are the steps they have taken uh, to protect uh, flora and fauna in our country. Right? Next one is, uh, we have discussed the four biospheres are there now. The textbook has given the four biospheres uh, names but where it's located not given. So we have to locate it, it's very important actually. That is uh, Nelgar, it is located at uh, the tri-junction of Kerala, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Nandadev, it is in Uttaranchal. Gulf of Manar, it is in uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, Sundarbans, it is in uh, West Bengal. So these are the, this is about uh, it. And uh, lastly, the migratory birds. The migratory birds. So some of the wetlands of India are popularly with the migrated birds. They are popular with migrated birds. During winter season, the birds such as the Siberian crane, some of the large number of, in the large number, will come to the particular areas. One such place, the favorable with the birds is a run of Kutch. In the run of Kutch area, winter season, the Siberian birds will come. It will make a huge diversity. Not only Siberian crane, but also the flamingo. And uh, the flamingo will come, it will come and uh, it can uh, uh, form its nests here and it needs to, you know, it is a, uh, uh, those nests, uh, those nests, they'll, uh, they'll, they just uh, make the, their nests in the saline and uh, uh, mud region and the rise to their hang ones over here. So this is about the importance of this. This is the pics of uh, uh, Siberian cane and uh, flamingos. So it is a beautiful one. It is in a, a Gulf of Kachin Gujarat coast. So this is about uh, the variety of uh, wildlife as well as uh, plant species in our country. So this is about the total topic of uh, natural vegetation and wildlife. So friends, uh, these are the exercises. You can read and write the answers. And uh, you know, these answers you need to comment, uh, you need to answer in the comment box. So that is the first one is, uh, to which one of the following type of vegetation does rubber belong to? So you need to answer the question in the comment box. Sinkona trees are found in the areas of rain rainfall more than 10 centimeters. You need to write it in a in a comment box. And which of the following state is the similar Similipal Bioreserve located? Similipal Bioreserve located which state? 
and which of the following bio reserves of india is not included in the world network of biosphere so this is the four bits uh, you try to answer it uh, and immediately send a comment to me in the comment section so this is about it and last topic we'll discuss uh, uh, tomorrow that is a uh, population of our country right so so friends uh, if you're not at uh, subscribe to my channel do subscribe and press the bell icon you will get a notification as soon as i complete my video and uh, don't forget to like and comment share at least uh, 10 your friends right so see you in next class so thank you very much and one more point to you all that so the most of the students are uh, commenting me that are sending a message to me that to start the history so soon definitely after completion of this next lesson population i'll start the history topic with the help of blackboard so thank you see you again thank you bye